Today we're fortunate to have Ty Allen Jackson with us. He's doing great things with his publishing company, and not only publishing great books, but he visits schools, daycare centers, at-risk organizations, libraries, and even correctional facilities. He and his company enlighten kids and adults alike in the importance of reading in a fun, upbeat, and contemporary way. As great as an influence as Ty is in the community, I think he'd agree that he's probably most proud of being a great father and a husband. The world is a more positive place because you are in it, Ty. Are you ready to share what a positive influence you are? Well, thank you. And absolutely, I am. Thank you. Awesome. And if you could, in the beginning, just, just start by telling us about your company. And um, I, I'm interested in, in how Danny Dollar was formed and, and anything you want to say about what you do right now. Okay. Um, it's almost impossible to start without talking about Danny Dollar. Uh, this whole thing was actually simp- was started simply by a question by my son, who was six years old at the time. Uh, I was working in corporate sales and um, not very satisfied with my life. The corporate grind is just that, a corporate grind. And, uh, but it was this question from my son that really changed my life. And he said, Dad, can we open up a lemonade stand? Now I'm from the Bronx, and in the Bronx, you don't do lemonade stands. Um, If you did, you might not have your lemonade for very long. (laughs) Right. So, uh, but we live in Western Massachusetts now. So uh, I got a cardboard box and uh, and uh, set him up, and I got a sign and stood on the corner with my son. Uh, The sign would just say simply uh, "Lemonade, seventy-five cents." Three hours later, my son made fifty dollars. Holy cow! uh, Holy cow! Was my reaction as well. So um, then he asked, he said, Dad, well, now what? What what do I do with the money? And you know what? I never thought about talking to my six-year-old son about money. Um, Mm -hmm. So when I usually don't have the answer to a question, and there's a lot of questions I don't have answers to, uh, I look for them in books. So I went to the bookstore to see if I could find a book to teach my son about entrepreneurship and investing and finance. And oddly enough, I couldn't find one. And I certainly couldn't find one with a, uh, a black child as the protagonist. In fact, much to my dismay, I couldn't find very many characters of color on any books inside Barnes and Nobles. So, wow. Okay. So, so that's when the light bulb went off. And I thought to myself, you know, perhaps I could talk to someone about creating a book that would feature uh, a, a, contempor- a young child, per- preferably of color, um, who... Uh, who uh, could teach entrepreneurship and investing in finance and really teach children basically about the fundamentals. I think I could do that. So the name Danny Dollar immediately popped into my head and I went home and I started writing. And it took me about a year and a half to get. What year was that? This was uh, like 2007. Okay. So, um, so I, um, no, I'm sorry. It was much sooner than that. Let's see. It was, no, that's about right. About 2007. So, um, so I, um, started writing. It took me a year and a half to write the book and, and I, um, started pushing it out to agents to see if they would publish it for me and no one would publish it. No one would touch me from a 10 foot pole. I actually submitted it to 150 different agents and I got 150 rejections. How did you go about finding the agents? Well, I, I simply I simply went to Google and I typed sure. in literary agents and I probably picked about eight to ten different agents from every major uh, from every major city. So we're, we're talking all the way from New York to L.A. and everywhere in between. I probably contacted about five to eight different agencies. Um, sometimes over the phone, sometimes via email, sometimes via email. In some way or form or fashion, I contacted them, and either there was a, no, a, a rejection or a no reply. So, um, so that's when I figured after a year and a half of doing that, I said, well, either um, I'm going to have to scrap this project or figure out how to do it myself. So I, uh, me and, uh, and my partners, we figured out how to create our own publishing company, and that's where this all got started. The amazing thing is that then, you know, it was to, to self-publish was not in the forefront of our minds. And just a few years later, it's pretty much the only way to go. I speak to a lot of authors and they're so much more profitable by doing it that way Absolutely. than if they went with another publisher. Absolutely. Here was the wake up call for me. Uh, in my research, I discovered that only 3% of all submissions get published. 3%. Wow. Um, and and the fact that, like I said before, I went to Barnes and Noble and I noticed a lack of contemporary 
on books. There were a few books about Martin Luther King and Jackie Robinson and stuff like that, but there really were no upbeat contemporary books featuring children of color, and I mean any color. I mean Hispanic, Asian, Indian, uh, uh, certainly black. And so it, it was. I knew I was I was working behind the eight ball already. Um, so really right. self publishing was the only option. And uh, and I'm, I, I couldn't express to you how fortunate I am that that uh, that I, that that happened. Yeah, well, now you've got a business and you're in control of it. It would seem a lot better. Yes, but if I if I if uh -huh. I could add on to that, and I I know maybe I'm talking too much. No, keep going. This is good. Um, what what happened is really very powerful because as I started after I, Danny Dollar first came out, first of all, I sold a thousand copies in the first month with no experience. That in itself was was changed my that changed my life. Uh, I realized that I could do this. And I quit my corporate job after that first month. Where did you sell those copies? Um, well, the majority of them were for, to friends and family um, okay. to, uh, across the Internet. Social media was a, a huge avenue for making that happen. But I made a connection with a bank called Carver Bank in New York City. They just happened to be the largest, uh, largest bank, uh, black-owned bank in the country. And they, I sent a copy to the CEO, and she was kind enough to reach out to me and said she loved the book and would love to do something with it. I met her and her team in New York, and they immediately bought a thousand copies and used it as a tool to get kids in Harlem to uh, to understand the, the, uh, the, the, the basis of finance as well as to go up and open up bank accounts into their bank. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. It is. Well, yeah, you you brought up Harlem, and, and I want to learn about you know your growing up and what it was like in the in the Bronx. And I grew up in Western Massachusetts, where you live now. I'm talking to you from Arizona. Okay. But I was I was a Yankee fan. Wow. So I you know I loved the Bronx, and and growing up you know in the in the Berkshires, I loved the city. So I you get really excited when I hear about even back when the Brooklyn Dodgers were playing. You know, even though it was was Brooklyn, I was excited by the you know the the excitement going on with all the people and the energy and um and so there's something that I like. So I want to hear about your growing up, but I want to ask you a couple of quick questions first. Sure. Um, I talk about the words. There's two words that I love, and that's simply I like. Okay. <laughs> Those two words, I think when you say them, it's kind of a gateway to positive energy. Good things happen after you say that. So if you can give me three things that would follow that phrase for you, I like, I would appreciate it. Wow. You know what? And maybe this sounds narcissistic, but first of all, I like myself. Uh, awesome. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with who I am and the place that I am right now. Um, I like reading. I, I, I like what reading does to you. It, it, it completely, especially when you're reading the right book, it, it transports you somewhere else, and it, and it does something to your form of entertainment can do. So, um, so I, 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 I like reading. Um, I like good food. I, I think there's, there's, there's something to be said about you know, sitting down and, and eating a good meal. Um, it, it just, I, I think food is one of the great stimulations of the body and soul. So, uh, so I, I, I would say I, those are my three things that I like. And you can appreciate those things. Absolutely. Great stuff. Good, thanks. And then, so there was, uh, there was a quote that said, um, a laugh is a smile that bursts. So I think, <laughs> you know, That's great. um, when you say I like, um, exploded is what you're passionate about. What excites you? What inspires you? So what's the, what really gets your juices flowing? Wow. Um, you know, my, my, my partner and I, we, we're very fortunate to be in the positions to mold young minds where we go out in the, in the community and, and we talk to children about, um, about the importance of literacy and the importance of reading and how it could be fun and cool and stigma yes. of being this, this geeky thing that only people with no life do. Um, right. So when we, when we go out and we enlighten these kids about this, I, that, that excites me so much to see the looks on their faces when, when, they, when you see the light bulbs go off in their head and they make that connection with reading and their favorite music or their favorite television show or, you know, just something that they find to be cool. When, when that light bulb goes off in their head and they say, you know what, maybe reading really is cool and you can see them mm -hmm. walk out with this energy that they didn't have before, that, that yep. just gives me a feeling I can't express. 
That's a beautiful thing. And it gives them more options. You know that I spend yes. time at school for homeless kids in Phoenix. Yes. And um, and I just I love being there. But, you know, some of them, their their reading levels are just are not good and they're, they're really behind and it takes away options. So what you're doing is by spreading your wings is, is helping everybody. And it's a huge influence. Thank you. We're very uh, proud of it. Yeah. So to, to your you're growing up. You know, I want to hear a little bit about growing up in the Bronx and what it was like and if, if there were possible bad influences that, you know, were, were tempting. And um, and then later, talk about, you know, maybe the fear of, uh, of moving from your job to actually, you know, publishing. Sure. Um, first of all, I had the most amazing childhood. I, I can't imagine many people had a better childhood than I had. Um, awesome. Despite Growing up in the Bronx, I grew up in the hood, whatever, you know, my interpretation of the hood is probably a little different than uh, a lot of other people's interpretation. But, you know, I, we, we, we were on welfare. My mother had me at 15 years old, had my brother at 17. She was a single parent. Uh, my biological father left me and uh, my father who raised me was in jail for most of my life. Um, despite that, my mother was so amazing. She was so strong. And despite being so young, she was remarkable. Hung amazing. out, never partied. She raised me and my brother single-handedly with no help, working two, sometimes three jobs. Uh, so it, it now coincide that with saying I had the most amazing childhood ever. It was because of the love that she gave me, the world she opened up to me. And part of that world was through literature, which definitely paved the way for me to become what I am today. Um, but growing up in the Bronx was so cool. I mean, it gets a bad rap now because of, of the perception. And maybe some of that perception is justified. But there was such a great sense of community when I was a kid there. And even though we lived in the projects, we all looked out for one another. Uh, my, my, my mother and uh, my, my parents didn't stem just for my mother. I mean, the, the people in the neighborhood were your parents. They looked out for right. you. They made sure okay. you, you were okay. And if they saw something was wrong, uh, they, 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 would, they would come and, 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 and guide you and make sure that you were being pointed in the right direction. So, so th there was a lot of love in the projects. And um, so, so, it, so it, was a very, it was a very weird and unique but special upbringing. I love the project. Yeah. I, I think it, it's... I think it's a it's an amazing place, probably unlike most places on the planet. Um, but I, like I said, I can't imagine having a better childhood anywhere else. That's that's wonderful. That's the key word is love and support yes. and, and that knowingness that you got. You know, it allowed you to grow and become who you are. Agreed, agreed. Uh, um, and that's you know, knowing you, I yeah, you have a feeling that you're. You, you know, you already have great respect for your mom and who she is, and I'm glad that you said it. Yes, you know, a quick story. You know, when my brother and I were probably eight and ten, and we were sitting at the dinner table, and she was doing her, she was working on her bills, and mm -hmm. um, part of, of her pain, being able to pay her bills, was her welfare check that she had probably gotten for about three or four months, and she looked at the welfare check, and she looked at my brother be the last welfare check we ever get because I cannot raise men on welfare. Hmm. I was 10 years old at the time, but that was, till this day, maybe the most important thing I've ever heard anyone say. It said so much about her and her character and her strength and her ethics. And I, 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 it's one of the greatest teaching, teaching, uh, teachings that anyone has ever given me. So uh, I, I admire her on, on a way that she doesn't even, she can't even conceive. She's my hero in every sense of the word. Uh, yeah, so you, you allow that, that love to flow, and you don't need to put it into words, and I think that's more powerful. Yes, absolutely. You're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. So did you go to college? I did not go to college. Uh, funny, another quick funny story. I applied to um, uh, Old Westbury University in Long Island, yep. and um, I got there, and I was so terrified of being alone for the first time and without my mom that uh, hmm. before school even started. And to this day, it's my, it's the biggest, if there are, if I have any regrets, that's the biggest one. Cause I think it's just a, such a powerful experience going to college. And I'm sorry that I, I took that away from myself because of my fears. Um, hmm. But because of that, uh, it's taught me not to be fearful.